Hey guys and gals, uh, Brian from Easy Retriever Training again. I was still in the kitchen. Uh, like our last videos, we were talking about foods that dogs shouldn't eat. Now we want to talk about some uh, some human foods that you can give your dog with some with some certainty that you're not gonna you're not gonna do any damage. First one we're gonna talk about is cheese. Uh, now there are some cheeses that are better than others. There are some cheeses you should avoid altogether. Uh, Swiss cheese is good. Is fine. Uh, cheddar cheese, mozzarella, uh, the little cheese sticks. Uh, sometimes those are easy to pack away. Uh, you can even do cottage cheese as long as you get the cheese that's not cottage cheese that's not cut with milk. Uh, there are some really good reasons why someone might give uh, their dog cheese. Uh, for example, and I know I know some trainers say your dog gets all of the vitamins and minerals necessary from the dog food if you're feeding a good reliable kibble uh, that. Your dog doesn't need anything else that can you know, they don't need any other supplement. And for the most part, that's true. Now, there are some dogs that have genetic deficiencies and things that you want to, you know, you'll work that through uh, with your vet. So you're not really giving them the cheese because it's going to fill some vacancy in their in their diet. But there are some things that are in there that, uh, that you ought to be aware of. There's vitamin A, there's some vitamin C, there's some calcium, uh, there's some uh, fatty acids, some proteins. Uh, but really, it's just it's just a good treat. I mean, just think about it. You you probably didn't need that 36 ounce uh, soda as you went to work this morning, but you probably you may have stopped and got it anyway. Sometimes it's just nice to to get some things that we don't necessarily need, but are nice. Uh, most dogs will enjoy a, a small cube of cheese, and I can think of a couple reasons why someone might use cheese uh, with a Labrador who's getting fed the right kind of kibble. One, especially with Swiss cheese, this is one of my favorite uses for this. Uh, if you've got a dog that's uh, an older dog or a dog who's got some knee or hip pain and you need to give them some medicine, whether that's an ibuprofen for some anti-inflammatory and some pain relief or, or other medicines that have been prescribed by your vet, uh, Swiss cheese is great. You cut off a little block, with, slip the pill into a hole, or if it's a, a cheddar or a mozzarella, just kind of jam it down in there. Your dog will scarf that down, not realizing that the pill's inside there because, it like, because he likes the cheese. Uh, and you've been able to medicate your dog without having to shove the pill down his throat, clamp his, uh, his mouth down and hold onto it until he, he, you essentially force him to swallow. Uh, one thing to keep in mind with cheese is not all cheeses are alike. There are some cheeses that you should avoid. And you can't, and it, this isn't something you feed your dog a lot. Even with the Swiss and the mozzarella and the cheddar and the other, the other cheeses that I mentioned that are good for your dog, or good's probably the wrong word, that are fine for your dog, uh, you want to keep in mind that these are going to be high in fat and they're going to be, you know, probably a little bit of extra sodium. Uh, this is a treat now and then. The other reason I, I would use these, you know, sparingly, but it's a great thing to incentivize your dog. Uh, as you're trying to teach them new tricks, uh, new skills, new behaviors. Um, and so you can keep a, a couple of cheese sticks in your truck, in your coolers, you're out working your dogs. Um, and as you're starting to introduce some of those new skills, uh, especially steadiness and other things that really require their focus and their attention, uh, slip, a, slip a block of cheese into that training session and things are gonna go a lot better for you. Um, some of the cheeses you wanna avoid. Stay away from all cheeses that involve uh, that have any herbs uh, or, or other kind of additives, especially garlic, onion, those kinds of things. So I would stay away from pepper jack for sure. Uh, check out my other video on why uh, on foods that, that retrievers can't have, and you'll understand why onions, garlic, and other herbs might be extremely dangerous for your dog, and you don't want to introduce any cheese with the, that, that has that in it. The other thing to keep in mind, uh, some of the cheeses are a little bit lower in fats, but they're gonna be higher in sodium. And Sodium can cause water retention and other problems with your dog. And then again, just the, the overall fat content. Uh, you know, cream cheese, you wanna stay away from that. You wanna stay away from goat cheese, um, Parmesan cheese, some of those softer cheeses. Uh, as you avoid those, just, just because Labradors, especially Labradors, but Golden Retrievers, uh, if, we, if, we get, if this becomes a consistent part of their diet, we're gonna have some problems with obesity. And Labradors, we know, already have a problem with that. So now that we know the cheeses we can and can't use or should and shouldn't use for our dogs, let's talk about um, another pretty regular household item that's, that's okay for your dog to eat under certain, certain circumstances. Uh, Store-bought mushrooms. Uh, they're they're going to be totally fine with your dog as long as they haven't been prepared with other foods such that, that aren't good, such as onions, garlic, and etc. Uh, a lot of times we saute onions and mushrooms together and throw them in and we want to, you know, we've got some scraps and we want to throw them into our dog's dish. I would suggest you totally avoid that. 
But if you've got some regular store-bought onion or store-bought mushrooms that are still raw and they haven't been prepared with other things that might cause problems um, and increase your dog's fat intake or sodium intake, mushrooms are totally fine uh, if your dog likes them. Sometimes it's a trick getting your dog to like uh, a new food that you're introducing them to, and so uh, you know, take keep that in mind. They may not uh, they may not jump on on eating a, a fresh mushroom. Uh, I know I can't get my kids always to eat them, so I may not be able to get my dogs to eat them. Uh, the next thing we want to talk about, we're going to talk about some fruits. Some fruits are easier than others. Uh, some fruits require a little bit more more preparation, and and so let's talk about. I'm going to move these two to the side. Um, and, and the apple as well. Uh, oranges, oranges are totally fine for your dog uh, to consume as long as you remove the peel. The peel has got a toxin in it uh, that can make your dog really sick. So, uh, but other than that, once you get rid of the peel, the f the, the actual fruit is totally fine. Uh, it's a it's a it's packed with juices. You've got all sorts of vitamins and minerals that are going to become that are going to come with that fruit. Um, I especially like these uh, if you've been out working on a hot day, you know, if you've run a hunt test and you've been there, especially if you're doing the junior and you're there all day, um, throw a couple of these in there, peel them up, give them to your dog in the little wedges. One of the benefits that you're going to get is you're going to replenish some of those minerals that the dog's, that the dog's lost while working out in the field uh, for the morning runs. Uh, and then, and it's just, it's just a refreshing flavor. I, again, it's, I kind of think about it like me. It, I, I kind of like the change in the variety, and I kind of assume that my dog does as well. I haven't, I haven't heard her say she doesn't. Uh, getting her to eat, getting Lady to eat an orange at first was kind of challenging. Uh, first, she just kind of spit it back out. Uh, by playing with her a little bit and throwing it out and letting her retrieve it, eventually, it was probably after the third or fourth time I threw a wedge out there and had her go get it, and she brought it back and kind of, I don't know, she's, she's got a pretty soft mouth, and so I don't know if she bit down on it and was like, oh, that kind of tastes good, and then scarfed it down and liked it. Uh, the other fruit I wanted to talk about are bananas. Again, like the like the oranges, the, avoid giving your dog the peels. Um, uh, the oranges and the bananas can present the peels can present not only can make them sick but can also present a choking hazard. Uh, there is a wives' tale I've come across several times, and maybe you've heard it that mashed up bananas will kind of soothe the doggy tummy ache. Uh, there's no science behind that. I can't find any report that substantiates it. But there's not going to be anything in here that's going to do damage to your dog uh, or cause any problems. Uh, the extra potassium is going to be re replenish some of the minerals that you dog, your dog spends while out retrieving. Um, so, so bananas are good, oranges are good. Just remember, forget the peels. Also, other you know, lemons are fine, like the oranges. Get rid of the peel. You remove the choking hazard. Get rid of the the, the little toxins in the peel that can make them sick. Uh, and those are good too. I've got these three set aside, the apple, the, the pineapple, and the, the watermelon for a couple reasons. These are a little more tedious. The, the, fruit of the, the fruit is actually fine, but you want to, they take some preparation. So for example, on an apple, the actual apple core and the seeds can cause some problems um, with your dog. And so you've got to core this and, and get rid of the peel. So it's just, for me, the apples are too tedious. I don't, I don't, I've not ever given it to her because it's way too much work. Same with the pineapple. Uh, the leaves, the pineapple leaves can make your dog really, really sick. Uh, and the, the peel, I, I don't know, is that a peel? The armor, <laughs> the armor of a, of a pineapple uh, can, is not good for your dog. Uh, cause problems as they're trying to swallow. And again, you got another choking hazard. So you gotta make sure that all of that's gone. But once you get that on, if you just get to the pineapple chunks, uh, where you know that everything's been removed that from the outside, uh, they're good to go. Uh, watermelon, kind of the same thing. You got to remove the rind. You got to remove all the seeds. Uh, if you're if you're if you've got a seedless watermelon, that's kind of the way to go because the rind is probably pretty easy to get rid of. Um, if you're sitting outside and you've got uh, you already have some seedless watermelon that's cut up and you're serving to people, this isn't a bad thing. If if your dog's running around, and you're going to throw something to them. Uh, seedless watermelon is the way to go. Again, you get a, a bunch of, uh, you've got some hydration quality. There's a lot of liquids, a lot of fluids in it. Um, but there you go. There are, there are some of the foods that I suggest, uh, people food that I suggest that your dogs are safe eating. You don't have to worry about it. Um, if you want a full list of all of the foods that I've got listed as being safe for your dogs, check out my website at, at uh, easyretrievertraining.com slash goodfoods. Uh, that'll give you a list of all of the foods uh, that are that are good for your dogs. 
or, or that are safe for your dogs. Again, I, and, and I'll just reemphasize this, your dogs are fine with whatever kibble they're getting. If you're, if you're feeding your dog a real good kibble, uh, they don't, they're not lacking in anything, uh, in any minerals or vitamins or anything else. Uh, these are mostly just treats. Uh, these are just like you and I, um, they're just something to do to change it up. Maybe you don't have the, maybe the kibble's not on hand, you need something to, you know, just give your dog a little reward. Uh, these are the kinds of things that are fine and you don't have to worry about your dog getting really sick. Uh, for more videos, we're going to be cranking out some videos, uh, about a video a week. Make sure you click subscribe on the bottom as we talk about things to keep your dog safe, whether that's eating or traveling or, you know, just getting your dog ready for, for the upcoming hunts or even the AKC events that, uh, that you're headed to this summer. So make sure you check below so that, uh, check the subscribe button below, click the notifications so that you get a little bell ring when we, uh, when we post a new video. I'm Brian from Easy Retriever Training. Thanks for watching. Another treat is for dogs is peanut butter. And it also has peanuts in it. So this is my daughter Ruby and she wanted to help out. Peanut butter is a good treat for dogs. I've seen some people use uh, peanut butter to teach their dogs how to drink out of uh, water bottles. Easier to carry a water bottle with you while you're out in the field um, rather than worrying about carrying a big, uh, a big bowl for them to clean out or to drink out of. And so all you gotta do is just take your water bottle and put a little ring of uh, peanut butter on the, uh, on the, where the water comes out. I forget what that thing is. I don't even know what that's called. Uh, put it on that. And then your dog will lick the peanut butter, and while they're licking the peanut butter, you just pour the water into their mouth until they get the idea that if they pay attention, they can get a drink of water as well. So uh, just be careful with this. Again, just like anything else, Labradors, especially if you're running those, uh, that, those dogs, they do have a tendency to get a little fat, and there is a lot of fat in these. Um, it's the good heart kind of fat, but any, again, for a Labrador, any fat is going to, you know, like they say, it's going to go to the hips. So there's our, uh, there's our four or five foods that are good for dogs. Thanks to Ruby for my help. We'll see you in the next video.